Fox created. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Coward Podcast. Sometimes I feel like throwing my hands up in the air. I know I can count on you. Sometimes I feel like singing, Lord, I just don't care. You got the love I need to see me through. You got the love. You got the love. You got the love I need to see me through. You got the love. You got the love. You got the love I need to see me through. That was wicked. That was a bit more like, wasn't it? This one is not for the faint hearted. You guys will know them, FDC and more, South's originals from the 90s and onwards. This is swag, scat, inside the place. How are we, kids? Good, thank you. <laughs> Very good for me. I don't really like talking. Yeah, it was the whole life. Get up in the morning, go and make some money, steal loads of shit. Yeah, and then go brew raising. Yeah, have a big bag full brew of brew. paint, and then just go tracks or yeah. Do you think the lifestyle preceded the 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 graph? I think it was a lifestyle. Yes. Yeah. That it was, was, yeah, that it was, was my life. a lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. Like other time, like you guys were either living with your parents or you were in and out of something or whatever. But could you sustain a living? Being, you know. You know, raising the way you were, being a graph writer, that whole culture. Could you... Is it sustainable? No, I had to get out of it. Like, it was... Eventually, it just got too much. Like, too much stuff was happening. And, like, because it wasn't just the graph. It was the drinking. It was... There was violence. There was, like, all sorts of things. I don't know where I would be today if I'd have carried on that life. It sounds like it got crippling towards the end. Yeah, I mean, there was one incident where something happened and it wasn't me that did it or anything, but I was I was there and it just scared the life out of me and I was like, do you know what, I'm done. And really? I just walked away, yeah. What was that? Oh. I'm right here with my special guest. Woo! Grime is in the building, drawing bases in the building. This is a versatile MC right here. Not to mention Shoddy Crew Original, North London finest, hold tight, sub 10 in the building. Yes, yes, man. What's <laughs> going on? Here? Now, some people from Grime are going towards drum and bass. It's, there's a bit of jealousy there. Mm. They're thinking, oh, like, why is he going to um, drum and bass? Oh, he's a sellout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the kind of chat you hear. Like, I was hearing that at one point. Really? Yeah. After I done a song, I done a tune called Headlines with Whiny. People were saying, "Oh, sub like why why like why are you doing drum and bass for like what stick to grime?" But I was like, "Bro, drum and bass is not far off from grime." <laughs> Inside the house today. Yeah, we worked really hard and tirelessly within the uh, uh, Killer Cow podcast research team for this gentleman. He does not pull any punches. He is the elusive, one of the original dons of London. We mean business, one mate bail. It's the mighty me rock inside the house. Hello, everybody. <laughs> give us a, <laughs> give us on, a pop. So the whole lifestyle thing, not just the, the piece in, but everything is on your mind. all the time. Yeah, yeah, definitely, 100%. Really? Yeah, 100%. Well, the kind of kleptomaniac and grab the shit off the counter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Don't like to pay for nothing anyway. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. It's, I'd like to say no, you know? But is that is that the force of habit? Is that is that a, a habitual thing? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Just... For me, anyway, for me, I can't speak for everyone, mm. you know? For me, yeah. It's so curious that... that it goes past the point, almost at like the point of no return. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I even got back yesterday. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I've just been in the Fed station, really. Really? Yeah, a million percent. Really? What'd you get bagged for? Yeah. <laughs> 
Today's show, people, is with a person that, in my opinion, embodies the whole 360 of street culture within production and more. Uh, the, the DJ culture is a lot more colourful with him. Um, original Reckless crew from grime to drum and bass to, I mean, it's the international sound and the sound that we all love in uh, what is going on in the dance floor right now. Scratch the DVA, Scratch Clark, how are we, my Easy, brother? man, good, man, good, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> it's all mad, man, it's all great. Really? Yeah, what, on top of the roof. roof. Yeah, me, bro, like... <laughs> what, they, what, what? Well, I played this, I played this dub. Yeah. You know, back in the grime days, you just play a little dub. It didn't, yeah. like, it's, it's no big deal. I'm yeah. on Deja. Friday night, yeah, eight to ten, and uh, Terra Danger had given me this dub that Lethal, the original Lethal, had done to Lethal B. Right. So I'm like, it's fine. And he was coming on the radio. He was coming on that night with with Bruiser. That was coming up as my guest. But before they got there, I played this dub right. About half an hour later, bro, the doors just come booting open. Yeah, and just uh, I see Lethal come running in with what? bag of man. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bag at, of towards you? At you? At me, bro. What do you mean? Me? I'm the only one in there. Well, my, my boy was in there and he was like, what's going on? Anyway, this guy, one of his mates got me like this, yeah. <laughs> He's like, where's, what's going on? Where is he? Where is he? If you have ever been a part of the UK hip hop scene at large, you'd have known these names back in the 90s and onwards. Nottingham calling the North, calling, but they're international, you understand. This is ILC Dash Dak inside the place. How are we? <laughs> hey, right, the mic is there. Let's get into it. They had a uh, literary folders. Folders. Bomb bombing. Folders. You know what I mean? Right? Wow. You, you, it's been you today. And they pulled out, fun. fuck, yeah, fucking shitloads of. But I didn't realise it was that much, to be fair. I'd love to get them now. Mm. <laughs> 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 They've got the biggest collection. Yeah, yeah. So I was using an alias at the time. I was writing humour. And he was he was writing, uh, I think he was writing, yeah, he was writing Kanza. Um, and um, they still never found the market was down here. So obviously, I'm, I, I, they've shown me all this. I'm denying all that. Nothing's happening there. Uh, and then they pull this, then they pull this other folder out. I'm thinking, what's this now? They're just sat there looking, smile, smug. You know what I mean? Looking at me really smug. I'm thinking, this ain't good. I'm getting a bad feeling. Um, then they pulled out another photograph, slapped it on the table. It was me hanging off a tree with a kind of smooth right in my hand. <laughs> they had a photo of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they rated it from someone else's ass. ass. <laughs> And if he wasn't making waves the first time he came around, he'd make more waves. Honestly, tsunami affair. Uh, <laughs> Huli Hansen is the mixtape. And believe you and me, this guy, it's the versatility to back it when it comes to actually holding, holding court uh, in the hip-hop culture. It's, it's a beautiful thing to witness from inception to now. And I'm very honoured to be calling him a friend of mine. Fly Hooligan inside no, the place. Let's get a cheers going now. Let's get a cheers. Chin chin, <laughs> darling. Chin chin. <laughs> Preparation is the new commodity. Pre Ooh. Preparation is the new commodity. Always be prepared. That's my thing. I've always got to be prepared. How deep do you go into preparation? Oh, very deep. Very deep. Like everything that you do, bro, is in brand. Like yeah. this Huli Hansen, just, it's not... It, 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 guys, if you haven't checked us out... Huli Hansen was ready when we spoke. The last time I was here. Huli Hansen was already done. Bro, you know, that ain't normal, though. <laughs> you understand that that's but not normal? That it's me p playing catch up with my brain. That's you know incredible. What I'm Kill a killer, foot see you. Gunshot for them, boy. Hey. Man, like, killer, killer, foot's on the mic. Let's go. I don't care what the debate is. Put me on the list of the greatest. You can despise and hate, or you can like and rate this. Through my veins goes greatness. Man can't never talk shit about me. I help mold and shape this. Pussy yours better know where your place is. Whole raise up. Get a man down with a taser. Big boy laying with a laser. Team cut sharp like razor. Look, I'm a general in this thing. You're just a sergeant major. I'm a big deal in this thing in a real life and on paper. The spirit of grime. You ain't heard the spirit in time. Bad man rhythm and rhyme. Kill an MC with a one liner. I can fuck up the dark, that's minor. But reload, that's minor. Hey, shiny. 
Hey, <laughs> that's been the best experience with a beatboxer. I cannot <laughs> lie. <laughs> Trust me, big up Ken. I'm my brother. Hey, come on. I'm a happy chappy. Took a long time to get him in, but we got him in. Like an Ikea opening in here. Old tight, ACR, the building legends from mid 80s onwards. Yeah! Merc, code inside the place. How are we, gentlemen? Oh, good to see you. <laughs> they almost like wanted to set the precedence of a zero tolerance. Yeah, thing. there was an absolute, and I, you know, and I've said this a lot, you know, London's ended up with a style of graph that it kind of deserves, you know, because there's always been this no tolerance, you know, until recently, mm. I think. Mm. I think it's changed now, but. You know, there's no tolerance, we won't tolerate, we'll paint it brown, we'll clean it off, we won't, you know, we'll put people in prison. You know, it's always been that attitude, like, as a city towards it. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? And that, it hasn't been like that. And yeah. you think that reflects in the style? Yeah, so I think you ended up, like, in the 90s, in my opinion, with this style, it's just, just like a fuck you style. Yeah. It was just like, you know... Yeah, diamond cut, bang, silver, yeah. Da -da -da, yeah. Yeah, just bang. You yeah. know what I mean? In your face. I don't care if it's ugly. I don't care if it's pointy. It's there. Aggressive. Yeah. We have... He's done that before, is <laughs> not he? <laughs> <laughs> we have a pioneer in the building. I oh, know. He, he was studying the whole way through. I was like, yeah, new, new words. Spin the words. Spin the words. <laughs> um, this gentleman from author to radio to fucking internet to podcasting to countless DJings with a hardcore into drum bass jungle, everything, D to A to Z, and a spokesperson for the scene. S A S A S A S is our number one DJ <laughs> fantasy in the place. <laughs> oh, that's the background noises that's added in. in. Everybody from all different cultures together under one roof, mm -hmm. and there was no problem. And you know what? The way I felt at the time was. It was more grimier on the street than it was here in the rave. Oh. In the rave, everybody was together as one. Didn't yeah. matter who you were, whether you're fat, skinny, whatever, tall, short, whatever you were, whatever nationality you were from, you're all together as one. So and it was that that made me go, this is me. <laughs> You've got an OG, you've got an original, got mouth from the mid 80s, maybe a little earlier, a bit beyond, you know. Hoppington was the uh, um, uh, inception, uh, but this guy cut cloth and made impact in the early 80s and beyond. This is Snake in the Building. <laughs> Welcome, man. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good, yeah. How can you define a, a style as being good and being bad? Um, it depends on the criteria of the person that made it. If they've, you know, if they've really, and there's one is technique, but there's balance, there's colour, there's, has that person kind of achieved what they want to, to achieve, which is one of the big art questions, you know, is it, you know, is it... Would that be working yeah. on assumptions or or can you see immediately like, ah, oh, no, I know what they're trying to do, but they just didn't quite cut <laughs> Unsung hero is not the word. Uh, part of the lineage of, of UK hip hop and beyond uh, before the gutter rap in the boom bap era. It was him, <laughs> himself, and Akai. Uh, he was minding his own business until he started collaborating. And for the last arguably eight years of a stronghold campaign of just collaborating production value beyond uh, globally, man. This guy is doing it with a whole heap of different people, uh, not to mention a lyricist himself. <sighs> it's a toughie. Yeah. Where to begin? Michael Parkinson in the building. <laughs> How do I top that, man? Damn, what an intro. That is why I make a living because everything I've done, you say you're talking about eight years, like man yeah. just went ham. And the reason why I went ham, bruv, no disrespect, in this scene, who's going to relate to an old, well, not an old, I could call me old now, but a father who um, happens to be black, smokes weed, loves hip hop. Everyone's got like some niche or some angle, rare, rare. When I came out, mm. I came out as me, blood. Like yeah. I came out as yeah. the working class dad. Nothing, yeah. no gimmick, no yeah. rare, rare. So who's going to relate to that? That's why I've always worked twice as hard. I've always known that. My music can transcend more than just me rapping, bro. Like, I yeah. know, like, I can make something classic. I'm still on the brink of doing that mm. with some... Pff, 
Some, you oh, know what yeah, I mean? no, listen, and this is where I have to push pause for one second. Inside the house, we are about to chop it up and have a chat. We've already had a few drinks in the chat anyway, so you know it's going to be good. <laughs> Four, three, nines, very own DK in the place. Oh, niners, niners. <laughs> you saying, bro? That's a big intro like that. I come outside and uh, one of the students I, I'd been working with had been stabbed like multiple times, like in the face, in the neck, like in the arms, in the legs. Like, he must have been stabbed about 15 times, boy. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was fucked. Like, he had blood gushing out of his face. So I remember just. Uh, what what, what, what did you think? You must have been fucking. <laughs> this is this is some out of body. Uh, yeah, where, where yeah, yeah. I go, where I, it's Bro, not in my remit. Is, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't, I didn't know what to do. I just held his face. I just held his like all the parts that were leaking blood. I just kind of held on to them. And then the the ambulance arrived maybe like five ten minutes later. Yeah, that shit fucked me up for a little bit. Fuck right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like seeing someone basically die in front of you for for you know five ten minutes, kind of mad. <laughs> We've got the legends for a very important and special cause. Mm. We will indulge shortly, but allow me to introduce you some pioneers in the game. Uh, a good friend of the podcast, you know him very well, London Posse's very own Rodney P. Yes, sir. But, Reachman of Fame, Dub Pistols Fame, The Man, The Myth, The Legend, Shawnee T inside the whoa, place whoa, as well. Whoa, whoa. Sick, yes. <laughs> yes. As a community, if you were put in a position where you were in need, that community would rally around and help support True, you. Very much you know? so. And, and it turns out in this situation, that's very much what has happened. Mm -hmm. You know, we have an incredible lineup for this event. Yeah. And we didn't have to ask anybody twice. Mm -hmm. There was mm -hmm. no, no follow up calls. Mm -hmm. It was just, this is what it's for. Yeah, I'm down. Mm -hmm. You know? So, first and foremost, we have to salute the drum and bass scene as a whole. Definitely. Their mind, they're so, so Every tight. One it's just, they're an example to how you build a scene and, mm -hmm. and cultivate yeah, your own real, audience. Real they're an talk. example of that. Demo. Them a, them a quan let them bad, them a quan let them know me, them a quan let them bad, them a quan let them know me. We set and catch in a killer, we said, beg it, come show me. Fox it on the microphone, no, they didn't grow with them a quan let them bad, them a quan let them know me. Medium say, Foxy, we say, beg it, come show me. Ain't a killer, killer, cause you're rough and ready, why? They don't know what we do is. Ouch, 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 ouch. It's like, ouch, ouch, rough neck scalp. We break under decks and we say bad boy, they're about to go. Rap with the skin and the grim and the top when I move with the mic coming out, slide out, cause we're going on, cause we're going on, digging out, yeah. Sounds like the dark, uh uh, it's danger, it's over. Tell them about the sack, the range over, it's over. It's danger, it's danger. <laughs> Another legend in the building. <sighs> and he's a very humble character, he never wants. People talk in that certain fashion about him, but I am because it's his podcast. <laughs> East London's first, and I'll go so far as first, but first generation East London, a central line batterer among many others. He goes by the name of Urge. What you say, nice my brother? Nice one. Right. Right. <laughs> How yeah. you doing? He had his problems, and it's not. It's very easy to judge someone and not understand their background. Mm. You know, it's not stuff that you talked about uh, when you were young. It's just you're into things and, oh, he does that, oh, he must be all right. And, you mm. know, but we're rubbing shoulders with all kinds of people. Mm. Um, well, that's what graft does, doesn't it, it? it? Oh, totally, totally. Different class doesn't exist. No. And, you know, I hate this thing where people try and put graft within a certain class and... Bollocks, yeah. we grew up as kids. We were none of fucking wiser yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Any, to where anyone was living or what their background was, oh, yeah? so That's what I loved the most. But, yeah, I, I think that was, you know, that was the thing, is you'd learn... There were certain situations with people and you think, fuck you, and what they've done to other people and all that, well, there is all that. that yeah. shit, yeah? yeah? And it's only later in life that you find out and you realise, you know, it's just... We're too immature to realise. Sorry, go, without going into too much specific detail, yeah. elaborate a little more. Hey, 
hey, listen, we've got a special guest inside the place, without question. Hey, a, an original, an original from the grime scene. And beyond, but a little bit deeper than that, we're going to get into some really tall, sta- tall tales and long stories. Talking about grime, we're talking about history, we're talking about yep. the mighty shiesty in the building. <laughs> Get in! Big up, man. Big up, big up, big up. Nah, like, them sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. Um, Three o'clock I, in I the morning. I do actually have, like, uh, uncles in music and stuff like that. Um, there's a group called Shut Up and Dance. Oh, and, uh, you, what do you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, a lot of people don't know. Yeah, man, but the two the two guys in there, there's um, PJ and Smiley and my uncles, Carl and Philip. So the fuck both, out of Both here. of them are my uncles. Stop That's mad, it. isn't it? Not now. now. Man. Yeah, man. Not say. now. Yeah, man. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, they uh, they actually at my granddad's house and that when we were younger. <laughs> Hey. South is definitely in the building. For real, we're yeah, already yeah. in the chat. It's already going to be a banging podcast. Hold tight, name. South in the house. This gentleman is part of the bigger, wider tapestry down south. Uh, AC, all city. If you don't know, you're about to get to know. Bops in the place. Hey, what's that name, Carlos? <laughs> they got a monopoly board in there. Seven bills. All oak, blue velvet top, gold trim. Wow. Bare stones, and I've been. You know, when something catches your attention for far too long, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. sitting there looking at it. I've noticed there is no alarm on this time, so I'm like, I'm taking it. But I also know I'm in. <laughs> I just pick it up, puts it under my arm, walks in. I'm paying for a couple of things, like small items from Ralph. So I've gone, paid for my things. Just so want... you're not doing them completely dirty? No, no, I bought my socks. <laughs> Today, there are a few pockets of this world that we call street culture um, that house some of the original pioneers and players, the movers and shapers and shifters, uh, a lot of unsung heroes, a lot of uh, fault lines that lie, that, that amount to what grime and drill is now, there were some purveyors. And one of them purveyors, collaborator of many, from Doc Brown to Sway, the Last Skeptic, and beyond, you can hit Pop's very own, the ultimate verb T inside the place. Big up, man. How Thank you? you for having me. How much of... Because you're an observer. Mm-hmm. You know, we had a little chat before we jumped on, you understand? You, you've very, got to do that. Yeah. You have to, that. right? You, yeah, you've got yeah. to be an observer. Yeah. Right, you've got to observe and understand nuances, read the room. Yeah. Yeah. H- how much of that do you process? How much of that input do you put into your way of thinking when getting uh, uh, into, you into know, rap mode? I would say... It, it it has to start with um, the the music has to catch me first to make me feel inspired, and usually like when I hear a track I like, I will. It's like uh, there's a, you know a screen goes down and it's like I'm getting imagery that I want to try and write out. So within that there'll be observations about things that I might have seen, but it's not it's not so conscious like. You know, someone's pissed me off. So I'm like, right, I'm going to write a song about this. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. is, 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 or, or even I feel really strongly about this, so I'm going to talk about it right now. It's always the feeling that finds me first before I put the ideas and words to it, basically, is what I'm you saying. You hear that? You hear that? He even said it like a lyricist. This man has got more history uh, that deserves further investigation, more deep diving. Um, part of the original FDC collective that came and onslaughted, took full advantage of their positions across South and beyond. This gentleman has been moving and shaking with some of the best for many a year and uh, soon on moving forward to progressing into comedy, into acting, into uh, <laughs> more mischief than uh, one podcast can hold. Ciao, FDC. Anyway, listen, if you throw enough shit at the wall, something's got to stick in it. <laughs> we were standing outside for months. It was all of us skin, about seven of us. And Cos was jumping up and down on a, on a slab on the floor. I was like, what are you doing? I said, fuck, I must put a window through. I went, all right, go on in. It was eight o'clock at night in a Sunday, a Saturday or Sunday. Picked the slab up, threw it straight through the window. We all ran through. I've grabbed the fucking the, the whole rack of puffer jackets, which I thought were puffer jackets, but they weren't. I ran up the road, got Shane's um, 33, took a whole mannequin with the jacket on and everything, Louis Vuitton, ran up the road with a whole mannequin. You got Cos took a big thing. It was, just, it was mayhem. 
we all ran up the back way to Clapham, got on the train, and the train was stalling. Like, we got halfway through, like, three stops, and the train was stalling. Like, I think, again, it's coming on top, yeah, mate. It's coming on top. Play stop, play stop, play stop, play stop, play stop, play stop. Inside the house today, the world is full of characters. Every scene has its unique characters, but they very rarely come across a, a, a gentleman of sorts that uh, not only professes in b boyisms, um, but has uh, imported himself over here as one hell of a. Uh, a collector of the finer things in fashion, uh, combined with two uh, shops named Check It, um, which you can find in the West End and in East End. He's here to join us, talking breaking, talking fashion, talking more. People with friends inside the place. What's up, what's up, what's up? <laughs> Thank you, brother, for having me. Oh, everyone know who is Kit Haring. Everyone know what is pop art. Everyone knows that Kit Haring used to be surrendered by... Rock steady by B boys back in eighties, and mm. he just love it, and he get inspired from it. He opened shop in Manhattan called here Pop Pop Shop. So here we go, some original pieces. What? This one is signed by Kit Haring. If you're not in Chicago. watching and listening, get your papers on this. <laughs> Focus. systems yeah. it's carnival time people <laughs> it's that time of the year for those of you that are in the west uh, which of course is best it's where uh, half of the world descend and uh, take out notting hill well we have one sound here that has been the purveyors of uh, hip-hop and beyond uh, years and years and years as a young boy understands seeing these guys come up one extra as well Oh my goodness, Tyrannosaurus Rampage Sound! Hey. Here we, here we. Sound clash though. Like, let's, stick, let's stick to the script here. Like, who would you want to clash? Who's the, who, who are the, who, you know, who are the oppositions here? Who are we clashing it's right nice, now? No one. We don't really clash, we're not a clashing sound. Yet. But if you were to be a clash, just don't uh, try and touch the question. I, 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 I can't lie, I'll take anyone on at the Rebel Culture Clash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah, yeah, well. quite happily do that. I mean, I'm not trying to spend tens of thousands of my own money just to go and do a clash in Birmingham or whatever. But um, I, I feel like because we like such varied music mm -hmm. and T's so good on the mic, we could clash anyone. Mm -hmm. And, 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 What's the word? Like, crush them. The gentleman of not only an MBA, MBE, MBA, MBE <laughs> stature, but, uh, you know, part of a, a wider cast of uh, soul music, the genre that uh, came out of the UK and internationally, collaborating with the likes of uh, Erica Badu and jumping on EastEnders for a stint. And just, you know, just generally being one creative starburst, it's the legendary <laughs> Omar inside the place. <laughs> Yes, bro. How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> Lovely. You've done that before, haven't you? As the producer, when I put my producer's head on, then I'm doing, I'm going into the sounds. I'm going into the mixing, of, of 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 the songs. When you when you're working with other musicians, then you're getting a vibe. It's like when you do when you go and do a gig. Mm. 
there's nothing quite like, excuse the, the phrase. Exactly. I'm uh, sure you get this. I'm sure that happens all the time, it right? It does all the time. Good thing I registered it. All right, so be careful. Yeah, yeah. Ten pound yeah. every time you say it. Inside the house. You know what time it is. It's graffiti time. And my guy has been doing it for a hot minute. North Weezy's finest, I swear to God. Son, it's Atom CTR in the building. What are we saying, my What's brother? Going on, brother? How are you doing? You all right? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Man, to, to have a conversation with you, is it's just so vast. We said areas, and then we made sure we hit them that night and try and get three, four done, go to another rooftop or satin, go and hit some little bush bomb. Mm. It, it wasn't hard. It was it was fun. It's what we wanted to do. We got a buzz out of it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. That's like for me now. Like it's just nice. Smoke a spliff. We get a nice chill. Do you know what I mean? When I was real young, I weren't blazing hard then. So that was our buzz, I guess, isn't it? Well, were you a lot more aggressive back then? Um, I was possibly yeah. But then I got my come comeuppance. I believe in karma. I was a little shit, but it definitely come back my way. So what I just happened? went. She is more than just a presenter. She is handling Sunday's one extra. She's a part of Team Spirit, the main players within the cricket. And well, we can talk a lot more deeper about that. <laughs> but but currently, offset of the Red Bull BC One. Uh, the breaking federation is in safe hands. Fee Mac inside the place. <laughs> Mike, oh, oh, hey. oh, oh hey. <laughs> How are you? My guy, I'm good, man. Thank you so much for having me. This is lit. Breakers mm -hmm. with their, you know, the, the freedom to just have an idea yeah. and then spontaneously do it. <laughs> like, I was, I don't think I was ever taught that, so I respect it. And I'm like, wow, like, mm. It is, it is incredible to see. Mm, it mm. is incredible to see. And I love that these these dance types are being respected as well. Because, you know, growing up, I feel like we were we were told, you know, it's the ballets and stuff like that that are, you know, the respectable genres of dance and mm. whatever. But no, like all types, all types of dance are just as important as the next. So but Having said that, mm -hmm. and here's a spicy question for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think ballets are not in the Olympics? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, that's a good question. It's so true. Killer Keller podcast, Sabrina Washington inside. Killer Keller. He's a winner. Killer Keller. He's a winner. Killer Keller. He's a winner. Um, inside the house, we have a gentleman that uh, has been rapidly making creative moves. Very much so, uh, decades on from his uh, inception, uh, you will know him. Capo746 inside the house, how are we, my brother? I'm good, man. Ooh. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I love I love all all aspects of it. I love being um, you know, some writers they're like, oh, fuck legals, I'm not going to a legal and uh, like that. I'd fucking love a legal. Like, well, where else are you gonna get to spend fucking ten hours on a summer's day, fucking doing like and find out exactly what you can do? You're not mm. gonna know that unless you're you're at a legal. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, I've got still I've got a bag full of stickers there, and, and there's, there's I think there's two or three drip pens in there. Um, I love a drippy tag. I love mm. stickers. Um, I love it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just love a fray sometimes. It's sometimes all you need to do to feel good is just go out there and just get a few frays up in the night. Rather yeah. sometimes it depends what mood you're in. Sometimes you're in the mood for a, a fucking ten hour um let's go all in at Trellick and then sometimes it's like just wanna go out with your mates and just get some frays up. <laughs> Inside the house. How? It's a real fucking pleasure. <laughs> a dear old friend of mine. Who's been a light year trying to get on here. He's complaining about how hot it is, but he should have come in the winter. This man is all seasoned. Seasoned in the world of emceeing. Uh, Vocal season. elasticity. Elasticity Ooh. here. <laughs> Elasticity. LSD. And, uh, elasticity. <laughs> From the era of jungle drum and bass in a world that is only described as mythical. The MC Foxy inside the place. I used to go and stand in with Nikki and have to stand in, in a DJ box and be like, 
that guy's got a gun, that guy's got a gun, that guy's got a gun. Fully activated. And one guy's got... Like, these guys are wearing like gold braces, like it looks like this bloody ashtray on their wrist. Whoa. Yeah, no, no, it looks like cigarette boxes. That's how big it is. Like, like it's got yeah, wrapped in boxes. Yeah. No, 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 they're, they're boxes that, and boxes and no, boxes. I'm saying it's the, 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 the Rolex, braces, yeah. no, the braces, the braces are that big. It looks like they're that thick. Like the bracelet is that thick, like a gold bracelet, that yeah, thick. thick. So it's only like three links. So it's only going like, <laughs> you're like, what the hell is this? I've never seen nothing like it in my life. And then Nicky did that like, scare you? Did it scare you? Yeah, it scared me, but it didn't scare Nicky Black Marvin. Nicky Black, yes, run in! And they play, Woo boy, what's all your talk? I'm like, Nicky, you can't play that tune now, Woo boy. And the man is like, Woo boy, Ark Shabba, I've been Leicester, Starlight Club 2001. Shabba got on the mic, Guns going off. Shut up. Really? This is when you listen. In the world of street culture with a gentleman that embodies not only the culture as a whole, but more specifically trains, countless trains, countless b-boy events, countless participations, countless heavy artillery, TAD, MDR, Tron is in the building. How are we doing, Jen? Uh, cool. Thank you. So cold to paint. <laughs> I don't know how you guys do it. You know, like back in the days, like I think I can, I can say, it. like back in the days, we have kind of a, um, I don't know how to say, like you know, we were painting like in the most uh like scary temperatures like minus 30 you're like okay tomorrow will be minus 30 so we can go outside and do like a big production you know with the guys to show to like to everybody that we can we can handle it you know so yeah. we can do it so whether it doesn't matter for us so yeah that's, uh, that, that was crazy you know that was crazy we are not doing again and uh, doing it anymore because yeah. it's dangerous. <laughs> it, is it? It is dangerous, right? I mean, that is one hell of a um, of an of an obstacle. The temperature, especially when you're going out in the dark at night. Yeah, you can leave your fingers there, you know, near the wall, easily. 